Now, I was going to cover an underdog token. I honestly was going to cover an underdog token. And I decided not to do it. And the reason I decided not to do it is because I felt I wanted to take some time to talk about toxicity again. Because I haven't revisited it in a long time because I assumed it was implied. It's like it's, it's a common sense thing. You're all intelligent people. You know how to recognize toxicity. There's, there's a problem in a lot of cryptocurrencies. And I'm seeing a pattern. And it, it inspired me to talk about my definition of trader in the crypto world. There, I've said it before. There are three types of traders. There's the FOMO traders. The FOMO traders are the one who will literally sell anytime they see red and they'll buy anytime they see green. That's a FOMO trader. I would argue the vast majority are FOMO traders. There are the gamblers. The gamblers purposely put money at things that they believe are going to make them a lot of money. They don't FOMO it. They might hold it. They'll sell for profit, but ultimately they're going after projects that they believe are going to make them the most money, regardless of stability, regardless of fundamentals. It's just, this is going to make me money. That's where I'm putting my money at. Cool. Then there's the fundamentalists. These are the ones who they actually do pay attention to charts and they do do limit orders and stop buys and stop sales. And they do see that there's fundamental things that they need to pay attention to because they know that most of these are long hauls and they're less worried about profit and more so about long-term stability and a por- and a portfolio. But within this group of traders, and it's, I guarantee you it's coming from the FOMO side and the gambler side, not the fundamentalist side, I guarantee you. And I was inspired by this because of the Satama Wolfpack predominantly, but it's not just them because I see it's happening in the responses on the YouTube episodes that we post under CryptoTalkRadio.net for the shows that we do predominantly around basic cryptonomics. What we're seeing is that there's a pattern forming there and it's always the same where people will respond and their default response, and I paraphrase because they all use different wording, but it means the same thing. Well, they're making money deep, deep, deep. It all circles back to that. To these people, it all circles back to whether you're making money or not. Let me clarify something here right now. Just because something is a scam doesn't mean you don't make money. Just because you make money doesn't make it not a scam. My point here is it's not about just making money. I understand for your investment strategy, you may only care about making money and that's cool and you are entitled to do it. You're also entitled to ignore my coverage if that's your only motivation because as I've said at the top of every show, I cover fundamentals. I cover function. I will criticize mistakes. I will call out errors. Why? Because I'm not concerned with whether I just make money or not. I'm concerned about whether it's long-term stable I'm concerned about whether there's a risk of the government cracking down. I'm concerned about whether a new investor can understand what the heck's going on. I'm concerned with not having another squid game. So I do go into somewhat detail to analyze the token in depth to make sure it meets certain fundamental things. Here's the thing though. If I see them make some blatant screw ups, if I see them lie to me, if I see them refuse to give me information, if they refuse to even acknowledge my messaging and my requests and they refuse to come on the show, I'm going to call that out because guess what? A salty community, a triggered community, a toxic community is usually a symptom of a token that is destined to fail. And I've always said, if you can't keep your community clean and it's easy to do that, don't use shillers. Number one, if you can't keep your community clean, I can't trust you as a project. It's not about whether I make money or not. I might make money, but here's the thing. If you're dealing with a project and this is happening now, and this project is somehow aligned with something proven to be a rug pull, that means you're at risk of being pulled by project A. They'll come back and say, nope, we're not them. That's cool. But you're aligned with a project that was a rug pull. With Satama, I gave direct evidence that there is a wallet. I don't know whose wallet it is, but this wallet is a whale wallet that dumped a a bunch of Satama and had dumped a bunch of Suzuki, which was a rug pull. We knew at some point in the past, and I'm only using this as an example, by the way, we knew at some point in the past that Russ was involved with Suzuki, Max was involved with Suzuki, thus, and we know that Russ has given large amounts of money for Lily. Okay, 
I don't know that it's Russ's wallet. My point is when you see a pattern of negative behavior that this wallet over here, that is a whale that dumps a Tama during a time that it's red. Remember what I said, FOMO sells on red. You see a large whale dumps on red that has a pattern of having dumped a rug pull. That should be a red flag to anybody who's paying attention to the fundamentals. Instead, what happens? I get responses, not to that specific message, but to others that say that we're a fudder and we're this, that, and the other. Henoch just gave a video, a very impassioned video. And look, I don't know the guy, but he gets a video, a very impassioned video on his show. And man, the dude just went full Kanye for a minute. Look here, fam. We're losing 33K. That's what we're not about to do. I was, I was stunned, not because of his outburst, but because he was telling the truth and he's getting attacked. So now I knew it wasn't just me. I knew it wasn't the show. Believes has been attacked. Crypto Queen got attacked. He not got attacked. We're getting attacked. This tells me that the, this, it's endemic. There's a cult forming over there where they refuse to accept the fundamentals. They refuse to accept facts. They refuse to accept that these are problems. So it got me thinking, where's that coming from? And it's really just that many of these people don't equate investment and crypto like they like we think they should because they're investments. You have given money of a thing and you expect a return. That return is not there yet in many of these cryptocurrencies. And we analyze why that might be the case. And we share that information and we feel that you should be just as upset when those returns aren't there. It's not a thing of hold, 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 because like we said, it's okay to sell for profit, but when you dump it, right, that's up to you. If you dump on red, why'd you do that? If you dumped on green, cool, you're gone. Don't buy back in when it's back red. If that's your strategy, we can't tell you not to, but we think it's stupid. But if you're that kind of person who just, like many of these in this community, no matter what the devs do wrong, no matter how they screw up, no matter how they lie to you, no matter how much they mislead you, no matter how much they withhold, you're still just, no, whatever, I believe, I believe, I believe I can fly kind of community. All you're doing is breeding toxicity because you're not listening to fundamentals. You're not listening to the truth and the truth is trying to help you. It's okay if you say, I don't agree with the devs and the way that they're treating the community. However, I will maintain my stance in the project because I'm going to hold fast to the project that I believe in. That's okay. As long as you acknowledge the devs are, I almost cussed, they're treating you a certain way with no Vaseline. As long as you acknowledge that's true, it's cool. But when you're blind, deaf, dumb, and stupid to the facts that are presented to you, that's a problem. This then, I, and the reason I told you that story and gave you that analogy around Satama, and I said it's not just them. But that pattern of just blind faith and blind following, it spun over into drip token because I had people literally arguing to me, you don't have to do the downstream deep, deep, deep. You're not going to make any money if you don't. So if your motivation is money, then why would you do that? You can't sell out deep, deep, deep. It's not renounced, which means somebody could drain it on the back end. You're missing the point. The fundamentals are not there. The numbers don't make sense. Thus, we don't support it. We have the right not to support it. You have the right to support it. We're just telling you, we think it's a sketchy project. In this case, the drip team seems like a nice group of people, but we don't believe in the project because the fundamentals aren't there. That's the statement that we make. What we expect of the community in communicating how they feel is to say, we looked at what you said. We looked at the white paper. We looked at this. We looked at that. We're going to go ahead and take the risk because that's what it is. And that's what we called it and see how it goes. Great. We love that. Then liberal financial, geez, I, I can't even understand. I can't understand the mentality of the, of the people here, but with liberal financial, the predominant response we're getting is it's copy of Tano, deep, 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 liberal, anything that's a fork of something else is fundamentally a copy that it's a copy doesn't make it bad and you can't prove it. What we said is that liberal financial has fundamentals and functions that make it superior to what Tatana was doing for these reasons, ABC, because it's been able to stop the bleed that normally happens with rebase tokens. I got somebody on Twitter literally come back and said, it's not a rebase token. Do, do, do. Their white paper straight up tells you this is a, and their medium. This is a rebase token and we are using the rebase to keep your value up. That means that person didn't read the freaking white paper. 
I said it multiple times, your white paper should be thorough and comprehensive. And fortunately, theirs is to tell you exactly what's going on. I had somebody else come back and say, it's copy of this one. Deep, deep, deep. I don't care that it's a copy as long as it's accurate, as long as it's true and as long as it's accurate. Copy means nothing. Like these are not, these are semantic things. They don't mean anything because at the end of the day, the token should make a commitment. The project should commit to a thing. It should tell you what it's going to do. It should tell you how it's going to do it. And then it should perform. Like it's that simple. I hold the same standard to Satama. You make certain commitments and certain promises. You make certain statements and I will hold you to them. And when you don't perform, I'm going to call you out on it. I hold the same thing to every token we cover. As long as you're performing the way you said you were going to do, you'll get a thumbs up from me until you give me a reason not to. I don't care if it's a copy of something else. I don't care that they had a Vegas event and they had got drunk. I don't care that they're giving away Lambos. I don't care that they're showing screenshots. I care that you practice what you preach. Barry White, if you don't do it, I will call it out. And I don't care what you say. This is what we should all be doing. We should call out when they fail. Because if this was a business and you were an investor of stock in a company, you would hold them accountable. You wouldn't just do the blind faith. But crypto has a toxicity to it. There's an innate toxicity to how this works. So I had somebody come back. And I believe this was also on Libero, a liberal. And he said, yeah, they banned me from the community. They're just really toxic. That's the basic question. Sure. But as certain people in the crypto community can tell you, many people have been banned from Telegram because Telegram is a toxic environment. It breeds toxicity. That's why I don't like it. That's why I don't want it. So then you have certain tokens like ETH fan token just recently had a back and forth with them because they told people, if you have questions, go to Telegram. And I'm asking them a straight question. Why can you not just use Twitter spaces so people don't have to go to another tool? They don't answer the question. Why can't you use Discord? D or token, anytime that they're doing any sort of major something, you watch what striking does. He will literally pull up Discord and the Telegram and Twitter spaces and the YouTube, and he'll have it all up there. And they have mods in different places and they're answering the questions, but they're not forcing you to all go to YouTube. It doesn't make any sense. That's what I want from a token is that you are taking the smoke wherever it is and you're being convenient to all your people. So when you're not answering my question, which is what ETH fan token is doing right now, I have, I have concerns because now you're going a course of action and you're not answering the question of why can't you do it like this? Ego starts to play in. When the ego starts to play in from the token developers, it breeds that same toxicity we don't want. And no matter what anybody says on the token side, I'm going to call it out when you are not making sense and what you said initially isn't consistent with this over here or you're not acting like a business. That's my summary here. If I see you're not acting like a business, if this was a stock trading thing and you're not behaving like a stock trading business, I'm going to call you out. You can feel free to ignore me all you care to. I'm going to still call you out for what it is because I want people to understand this is the analysis we all should be doing or it's never going to get any better.